This is a planetary gearbox with a six to one gear ratio. This is one for 36 to one gear ratio. And this beast has a 216 to one gear ratio. I'm gonna show you exactly how I made each one and then we're gonna test them. But before we get into that, let me explain to you how planetary gearboxes work. A planetary gearbox has four key components. A sun gear, planet gears, a planet carrier, and a ring gear. The sun gear is the input connected to our motor. The planet carrier holds the planets and the planets mesh and rotate inside of the ring gear. So we can use the planet carrier as our output. But the cool thing about planetary gearboxes is that you can change the gear ratio based on what's moving and what's not moving. For example, if we keep the planet carrier stationary, the ring gear becomes our output and always moves in the opposite direction of our sun gear. An easy way to find the gear sizes for the ratio that you're looking for without all the complicated math is just using the online generator. The one that I use is planetarygenerator.com and it gives you five important measurements once you have your gear ratio. The amount of T for the sun, planet, and ring gear, as well as the distance of the planets from the center of the planet carrier, and finally the angle between each planet. Thankfully, most CAD softwares have a spare gear add-on that makes it super easy to create these gears. All you have to do is add the number of teeth and your desired module and you're just about done after that. Some important things to note if you are 3D printing your own is to always add some backlash. 0.25 worked for me, but if you try to print something without any backlash at all, all the gears won't perfectly mesh. Also, I use helical gears in design. They're quieter than the spare gears, and all you have to do is click a button and select the angle and boom, they're done. When making the planet carry, that's when we use the last two measurements that the generator gave us. The distance between the planets is our module, which is 0.05 times 13.5, which gives us 0.675. So when making the rod, the planets are going to sit on, the distance from the center of the circle compared to the center of the carrier has to be 0.675. I use bearings for the project, so the rod size is the internal diameter of the bearing and the hole in the planet gears is the outside diameter of the bearings. You don't necessarily need to use bearings, but it reduces the friction significantly, so I definitely do recommend it. So let's print everything out and put together the first stage. And that's about it as far as putting together the first stage. And as you can see, it's working. It's working pretty smooth. I had to go in both directions. I really wanted to see how it looks about the top one. So as you can see, it looks super cool. It looks super cool. But of course, it needs to be functional. So let's test it out. The most important thing for me was definitely testing the torque. So I just took a scale at three inches. That's the length of the rod that's on there. We're getting about two pounds, a little bit under two pounds, which is pretty all right. I did have like a spare five pound weight. So I was like, you know what, let me just see if it can lift five pounds, even though I should have known better. So as you can see, like as soon as we <laughs> put the weight on there, the gearbox like instantly like gives up and drops. Like no resistance, resistance at all. So I knew for a fact it wasn't gonna work out, but it's fine because our gearbox is stackable. So let's try a 36 to one gear ratio. So this is what the 36 to one gearbox is gonna look like but let me explain to you exactly how we achieved this. So first, it all starts with the planet carrier. So initially the planet carrier was an output. Now we're editing it to be an input. So we're using a sun gear as the top of the carrier instead of our regular output. So that second sun gear on the planet carrier is gonna be the input to our old planet carrier. Now if we stack another ring gear on top of that, AKA a ring extender, we basically have two planet carriers connected to each other. We have one six to one gear ratio going into another six to one gear ratio with six times six gives us 36. And to make that change, it's pretty easy. So let's do it.
And just like that, we are back in business. So the cool thing about this, when you take off the top, you can see the different planet carriers, the speed that they're moving. So the 61 is in the back, the 36 to 1 is in the front. And I tested this one the exact same way and we're getting six pounds. So definitely an improvement. Technically, we're supposed to be getting about 12 pounds, but of course, a 3D printed gearbox is not gonna be 100% efficient, but I do wanna retest it with the weight to make sure we can at least lift up the five pound weight. We did lose some speed, but five pounds, light work, not even worrying about it. It's doing five pounds for reps right now. So I was like, all right, let's up it. Let's just jump to 10 pounds. And at 10 pounds, it looked like it tried to do it at first, but yeah, it's not happening. So we're gonna up it one more stage and see what happens. So now you can see it moving three different speeds, the six to one, the 36 to one, and then the 216 to one in the front, super slow. And I know we was getting ready to move some big weight, so I put a little bit of WD-40 in there. So with the first test, it was kind of weird, because I'm like, I'm getting the same numbers as the 36 to one gear ratio, so I was like, can be, something's off, let's just go straight to the weight. So five pounds, did the test, it works easy peasy on to the next one so if you remember the 36 to 1 fell to 10 pounds but the 216 to 1 did so improvement as i'm getting ready to load 15 pounds on there it broke so i had to reprint the output and i tried it again but instead of going back to 15 i went straight to 20. after going to 20 i suffered another break this time at the output of a planet carrier so i'm like, okay maybe i'm bugging out let's reprint it this time with 100 percent infill and tried it as i'm testing the 15 pounds i noticed like the gear made a weird noise and it started moving funny so i was like okay let me open it up and let me take a look and of course we had another break so i guess we'll never be able to really find out how strong the gearbox is of course you can estimate based off math but long story short I gave up. But if you enjoyed the video and at least learned something, be sure to give your boy a like. And if you want to see more content, make sure you subscribe to the channel.